<laughs> so I went to the premiere of Science Fair in Los Angeles and I loved it. And I was so excited you guys were doing a series. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Of course. I'm wondering after the success of Science Fair, when did you know you wanted to quote unquote expand the universe? And why did you decide to do a series? Yeah, I mean, I think we pretty much, well, it took us a little time to recover from the future, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. But, it, you know, pretty quickly after that, there was talks with National Geographic and Disney about doing a series. And then, uh, lo and behold, a little pandemic hit us and sort of delayed that process. Uh, but the minute that, you know, we got the all clear to go out there and film again, I think we were eager to sort of enter this world again uh, in a series format because it gives us a little bit more time to spend with the students and to, you know, film at a few more schools, and then also get a little bit deeper into the science um, of it all. Uh, so, you know, for Christine and I, I think it was, you know, it was super fun to go back into this world, uh, especially after a pandemic. It was just a breath of fresh air and like a ray of sunshine to spend time with kids who are solving the problems of tomorrow. Yeah, I, and, I, and I think, you know, the science fair world has so many incredible characters and incredible stories, and we were limited to just uh, to nine for the feature and so I, I think to have a second uh, bite at the apple was such a great blessing and uh, no, it's one of the it's this bubble that of the world that gives us so much hope that I think we were you know eager to get back to it and um, to hang out with those kids it's one of the most fun things in the world you can do. Good. Following up on that actually I think both the movie and the series were so incredibly well cast and these mm -hmm. projects feel urgent and important. Um, did you take the students' research into consideration consideration during casting? And can you talk about that process a little bit more just in general? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, I, I think we wanted a mixture of, of stories of different kids that represent kind of the diversity of the experience of the science fair. So you have kids who are real long shots who are from, you know, under-resourced schools and you have kids who come from perennial powerhouses uh, and are winning every year. But you also, the science is so different. You, you know, it's, it's every single corner of the field. So um, you have kids solving uh, environmental issues, uh, you know, species that are extinct or near extinct. And then you have kids who are inventing new kinds of wheels, like you're literally reinventing the wheel. And I think uh, I, I think we wanted to kind of uh, show that range and celebrate that range. And, um, you know, I think oftentimes uh, people think about these science fair nerds and there's it, it, it feels as though almost unapproachable as though, you know, it's this high level science that nobody will ever be able to do. But I think um, I think there are different corners and, and we always encourage kids to uh to to do what they are interested in and what what appeals to them and so hopefully in part partially by showing all these different kinds of science so we can somebody will be able to see themselves um in one of these kids or be interested in their projects one of these projects so um yeah it, it, it's a real uh fun process because there are you know 2000 kids who compete in that fair and they're all brilliant so it's fun but it's also really hard to just choose a few Sure. What made you guys um, only do three episodes? Because quite frankly, I feel like I could have watched 10 because these kids are so interesting. Their parents are interesting. Their teachers are so interesting. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we certainly feel like we can do, you know, recurring seasons of <laughs> science fair. I hope uh, you do. Multiple <laughs> episodes because we love the world so much. <laughs> Uh, but I think, you know, I, I think three is a good number for, you know, for the for this first uh, season anyway, maybe there'll be more, who knows. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, it just felt like it was a good format to have um, almost like, you know, a three act structure for yeah. a series. It also it kind of naturally follows the arc of what the science fair is, which is getting out of your local fairs, going to your state fairs, getting out of your state fairs, then going to ISEF. So um, it kind of fit neatly into that that uh the actual arc of a science fair journey yeah that's right. what i meant to say okay <laughs> um i really love the animation and i felt like it helped us get to know the students better and tell their story uh why did you guys make that choice and how did you decide what to use for each person yeah well um 
uh, I'll say it because she she may be fat, shy about saying it. Uh, our graphic animator was actually Christina's husband, Alfie, uh, who's a very talented. <laughs> I was just beaming over here. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's talented. Silently beaming. Uh, and he worked with uh, a, a great group of uh, animators uh, called the Shy Kids, um, who we love too. Um, and so, uh, but the decision was made very early that like, if we're going to do the series, like we really want to sort of people to understand the science a little bit more. Uh, so the animation really helped us sort of spell it out for uh, the audience of how it works. And obviously, you know, like we love the tone of science fair, the film, and we wanted to kind of preserve that, that is fun. This is a fun world. Um, and so the animation we hope, to, you know, reflects the tone uh, that we were trying to capture in it. But this isn't just, you know, like dry, boring science. Science is fun. It's interesting. Uh, and um, yeah, and so that's what we were trying to capture with the animation. You may have more to say about it since you're married to. No, I, I mean, I have to say like the, <laughs> the moments that we really leaned into the animation were A, to explain the projects, but also B, to just uh when things got really high school I think is when we were like that's when animation should come in when when like and, and inhabit the actual world that they're living in so it was kind of a new technique they were you know drawing over um just uh, documentary footage and there were things that were living in within the scene um with the the students that I think are really fun so um yeah, it was a process of trial and error to feel to figure out how where we dial up the um, animation and help help use it to help punctuate certain jokes or certain moments and 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 where to dial it back. But it was a really fun process in my house <laughs> of figuring it out and and uh, yeah, I you know especially Alfie and Alex um, Booth really. Um, I think they really crushed it. So we love the animation too and are not biased at all. <laughs> exactly. Well, I think it was very effective. So thank you for including it. Thanks. <laughs> and um, my final question is, um, do you guys have any like final thoughts you want to share or maybe something I didn't ask that you do want to make sure the audience knows about either before they go in or as they're watching? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we, we, we like Christina said earlier, you know, we hope this is a ray of hope. Uh, we know, you know, we're living through some times that, you know, are not always, you know, feel very hopeful. Uh, but these kids, you know, really do represent the future. And I think as long as there's kids doing this kind of science and are invested in this kind of science, uh, there's hope for us all. Uh, and um, yeah, the kids that you see in the series are really going to be um, the, you know, the future uh, for, for science and innovation. Um, and so don't be surprised if uh, you turn on the TV in 10 years and this kid's giving a TED talk and telling you about his million dollar company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I think as parents or as adults, I think there's a lot of lessons here of like how we should be supporting our kids and, you know, how um, kind of a rigid academic setting is not right for everybody. And, and, um, we should be encouraging kids to explore their natural interests and 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 taking on big problems. But I, I, you know, as as adults, I think there's also a lot of lessons that we can learn from these kids. That when they see a problem, they don't just think, "Well, that's somebody else's problem. Somebody else's like, there's nothing I can do. There's no way I can solve any of this." I think they take all of these the Earth's problems very personally, which is very inspiring to me. And I think um, if, if we all took the earth's problems so personally maybe we would be in a better spot but um yeah i just love their like their optimism that they can help find a solution and i hope uh i hope we don't lose that as we get older and retain that kind of that that determination <laughs>